stealing data from air gap PCs using fan vibrations, jailbreaking CPAP machines to turn them into ventilators, and Pastebin removes their API scraping. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for April 21st, 2020. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. On to the news. This is not the first time that I have mentioned Mordechai Guri, nor will it be the last time either. Guri is the head of R&D at Ben Gurion University in Israel. He has been researching ways to steal data from air gap machines for several years, and many of these attacks would work, though they aren't necessarily feasible. Oftentimes, air-gapped attacks require physical access to a machine or a network, or the data transmission is very slow, so they would likely not be used in a large-scale attack. This newest technique is slightly different. Guri and his team have found a way to use fan vibrations to steal data from a machine, even if it is air-gapped. They're calling this technique Air Viber, and it uses PC case, CPU, GPU, and any other fans installed within a chassis to transmit data to an attacker. If an attacker was able to plant malicious code on a target machine, even if it is air gap, then they could control the speeds by modulating the fans up and down in RPMs, which could control the vibrations that come off that machine. The attacker could then record the fan vibrations through an accelerometer sensor in a smartphone or other nearby device using surfaces around that target machine. If an attacker did not have access to the target machine, they could also put malware on a user's device who could then infect the target for them. According to Guri, the accelerometer in smartphones does not require permissions to run within apps, so a user would not need to approve of anything. While this sounds really cool, the data transmission would be really slow, similar to other air-gapped attacks. With this one hitting around half a bit per second, yeah, it's really slow. So chances are that a real life attacker would actually use this are very, very minimal. Although the potential is still there and it is a reminder that air gap machines should be treated with the utmost security. Guri's white paper explains the technique in more detail while also explaining some countermeasures that folks can take. He recommends placing an accelerometer sensor on sensitive machines to detect anomalous vibrations. Users can also use insulating materials on or around the machine to dampen vibrations. Using code or software that can detect changes in the fans or that purposefully changes the fan speed or RPM at random intervals can also help. Now, this is pretty similar to surfing attack, which I reported on in March, in which a target device placed on a tabletop could transmit vibrations to turn on Siri or Google Assistant, thereby stealing data from a smartphone. In this case, this was created by a collaboration between U.S. universities and the Chinese Academy of Sciences. In this case, the team recommended keeping your phone in your pocket and disabling voice assistance from the lock screen. This story was chosen by ThreatWire patrons on our weekly show poll this week. Due to the pandemic, many hackers are turning to new techniques to speed up the rate at which hospitals get the protective equipment that they need, with others 3D printing parts for ventilators. A security researcher named Trammell Hudson decided to look into popular CPAP machines that are meant to treat sleep apnea to see if they could be also used as ventilators. He was successfully able to jailbreak break a device called an AirSense 10 to unlock its potential to be a bi-level positive airway pressure machine, which is also called a BiPAP for short, and possibly you could also use this as a ventilator. The company behind the $700 sleep apnea CPAP devices is called ResMed, and they had stated that the AirSense 10 would need a major reworking to be able to function as a ventilator. This company also manufactures ventilators, which are much more expensive than these CPAP machines. Hudson found that the firmware within the AirSense 10 CPAP machine already has ventilator functions as a part of its code, so he reverse engineered the device, going so far as to take it apart and turn it into a BiPAP machine. Now CPAP machines funnel air into a mask, but more advanced BiPAP machines funnel air into the mask, then reduce pressure to a lower level to allow it back out. 
hence bi-level. Based on this, a CPAP could not be used as a ventilator because it would not be able to reduce the pressure to allow for the air to flow both ways. After reverse engineering the AirSense 10, Hudson was able to demonstrate using this machine as a bi-level with a patch he calls air brake. Now, since the FDA has approved BiPAP machines to be used as ventilators during this pandemic, as long as they are fitted with filters to prevent the virus from spreading, this means that his jailbreak could put even more devices into hospitals to combat the virus. Researchers hope that by showing how AirBrake successfully worked, that ResMed would release their own firmware for the devices to quickly and efficiently be used as ventilators. ResMed could do this using the code available through AirBrake and releasing it as an update over the air to their devices already in the field, instead of waiting for more ventilators to be manufactured. Or they could also do it in parallel with the manufacturing. Unfortunately, though, ResMed states that their AirSense 10 devices would still require significant reworking to be used for bi-level therapy. And while they are exploring the option, I quote, of working with researchers, their main focus is production of ventilators and masks. Now, since these devices are being used to save lives, the researchers do not recommend that hospitals try to jailbreak their own devices. The jailbreak itself is not FDA approved and the devices would need filters still and remote control capabilities to be effective. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters over at patreon.com slash threatwire. My hush puppy perk level patrons are awesome. I always love your fur baby photos. Thank you so much for sending them in. I love them. Keep them coming. And if you want to support Threatwire, but you don't want to be a Patreon supporter, check out snubsy.com slash shop to get t-shirts, stickers, and even my own digital photography, all of which supports my shows and allows me to create this awesome content for you. You. So thank you so much to everybody. I truly appreciate your support. Pastebin just made it a lot harder for security researchers to find, track, and report malicious software or dumps added to their site with a swift change to their terms of service and their API. Pastebin is a repository where anyone can share raw text files, dump source code, and host submissions, although it frequently finds itself as the dumping grounds for not only legitimate posts, but also malicious code or huge text files of stolen credentials or personal data. Due to how Pastebin is constructed, there's not an easy way to scrape the data that's posted to the site without paying a $50 one-time fee to Pastebin to do so. But even though this scraping API API has been used for years by researchers to report on malicious uploads, and even though the site was used to search publicly available data, the site decided last week to update their terms of service, discontinuing the API scraping and removing search because, according to Pastebin, it was being abused by third parties for commercial purposes, for spamming, or for selling personal information. Now, technically, that is true. It was being used for commercial purposes by third-party businesses like Intelligence X, who would charge subscribers to scrape data from multiple sites, including Pastebin. But Pastebin has been known to be terrible at moderating their own content, allowing individuals to dump data without having an account, and it has also become the most widely used site for hosting malicious scripts or private information. So now that researchers can no longer search, nor can they use the scraping API that they paid $50 for, many are notably and rightfully pissed. And no surprise, after days of bad press, Pastebin tweeted that they take security very seriously, so if you are an independent security researcher who wants to volunteer and collaborate with Pastebin, you can email them directly. In no forum have they publicly posted that they will refund any security researchers who already paid the $50 lifetime subscription for access to that API scraping. Ugh. Well, before I leave, I want to say thank you so much to Tom and Bob who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you so much to each and every one of you. You are awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.